Hi, welcome back to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is Bud Pumpernickel. So we had a little bit of bad news. The people that I was supposed to clean for ghosted, and I think the reason is because of not an embarrassment. I think that that household has a couple of ADHD cases in it. If you watch my last two videos, I that's the house I'm talking about. I did the kitchen and then a dining room and a living room and part of a back exit. And they've got hoarding tendencies for sure, but I think they also have some ADHD. And one of the reasons that I know that is because my wife is also ADHD and I deal with a lot of the same issues in my house, though not as severe. So in the background, what I'm doing is I'm going to play a clip of me cleaning this up in real time to show how quick some of this actually goes. Before we get too into this, I want to back up a little bit. I believe that part of the ADHD that is showing itself to me through the household that I was supposed to clean is in the lack of communication. So like when she communicates with me, she's all gung-ho about getting it cleaned and everything, but I can't get a response from her to save my life about... Um, just me showing up and what time I'm going to be there and making plans, which is really important because this is a 100 mile round trip for me. It's 50 miles there and 50 miles back. And the only thing that I really had to do today was clean two bathrooms, which would have taken me a couple of hours. But I never heard back from her. And to be honest, I, I can't drive 50 miles to this house and then find out that she's either not home or not ready or didn't want it or wasn't expecting it or whatever. So anyway, back to the ADHD that takes place in my house or that exists within my house. We are a couple who I think a lot of people can relate to in which one person cleans and the other person seems to take advantage of that. And I say seems because I don't think that's a case in a lot of houses. Yes, those houses do exist. Yes, those relationships do exist. But I think in a case like mine, I'm autistic and then I and I like to put order into chaos. My wife is ADHD and I didn't know what that entailed for the longest time. But part of it is um, the disorganization kind of goes hand in hand with it in a lot of cases. And then that just not knowing how to do specific things and to take instructions or whatever, that's, that's another part of it. So in my mind, I will look at this and think the spice cabinet is two steps from where I'm standing. So therefore the spices are easy to put up and you should just turn around and put them away. Whereas in my wife's head, she's thinking I use the salt all the time. So why not just keep it by the stove? And that's fine for a lot of things, but whenever you have as many things in your house as we have, that becomes the frame of mind with literally everything anyone uses. So if she uses uh, cough medicine when she's sick, that will be put on her nightstand or whatever, and then it will never, ever be put away even after the cold is gone. And for the longest time, I used to conflate that with laziness. And in my old age and in my education with things like ADHD, I finally realized that this is not a thing that she does on purpose. So how do you deal with that? Well, well, part of me still has a problem with it because I own a cleaning business, which is nothing like what you see on my YouTube channel. I, I own a housekeeping business and it's not dealing with, you know, hoarder places or anything like that. It's, it's dealing with regular everyday housekeeping. Then on Saturdays, I get up early in the morning, I clean the free ones all day and record it. Then I come home, I edit, narrate, process, upload, and I'm usually going on Saturdays from about 9 or 10 in the morning until about 2 a.m. So when I get home, I am so exhausted that the last thing I want to do is mess with my own house. So over time, my house just gets stacked up and piled up and cluttered and more cluttered until the point where I will just get extremely frustrated with it and then just have like an all out clean fest. So if I were teaching someone with ADHD how to clean on a regular basis, what I would do would be to tell them to break down the room into small sections. So the section that you saw me cleaning there took about five ish minutes. I would say set a timer for five to 10 minutes and your only goal is to clear off and clean that one section of that countertop. Then 
when your alarm goes off or whenever the task is complete, maybe stop and take a break so that you're not looking around the entire room and thinking, oh my God, this is overwhelming. There's no way I can get through this. There's too much stuff. And it just becomes like this weight. So what I would suggest is to do that five, 10 minutes, take a break or step out of the room or whatever. Then when you come into it next, designate another spot. Like say, I'm going to do the dishes or I'm going to clean the stove top or whatever. Just one thing at a time, even if you have to set alarms, that way you're not cleaning the kitchen, you're cleaning the stove or you're cleaning the countertop or you're putting dishes away. One task at a time. So anyway, time plus that condition plus my exhaustion is what led to our bedroom being absolutely trashed. There's so much dog hair in here that finally I said, I'm not just going to clean this room. I'm going to go crazy with the room and I'm going to rearrange it as well. So my TV that sits on this giant uh, stand, this dresser like thing, which by the way, no joke is like 300 pounds. I had to move that on my own, but the TV sits on like a little swivelly thing I think is what they call it. They call it the swivelly TV thing that annoys me. Well, the cats will rub their faces on it because cats are insane and weird. And it would move the TV every time I was trying to play Xbox or watch a show or whatever. And it got annoying. So I found an old TV mount in my garage that just so happened to have all the pieces I needed and fit this TV. So I finally decided to go ahead and mount that on the wall, put the TV on it, and then swivel our bed 90 degrees and get everything in that room moved and opened up. And man, I'm not even joking. I vacuumed up like four or five full canisters in an XL vacuum of just dog hair out of this room. It was so bad. But what I found once I got all that stuff moved is that it's kind of interesting. My wife, and I don't know if this is ADHD or just her personality, but likes new things. She likes change. And so if we rearrange the room and we open it up by turning it 90 degrees and we have the TV on the wall and all that, it feels new. It feels like there are literally new things in the room, even though we're using old stuff, we're just putting it in a new place. And that kind of seems to scratch an itch for her to go out and buy new stuff. And I'm kind of the same way, but my autism is not good at dealing with change, but occasionally I'd like to have a room remodeled or repainted or or something that's a change just because it makes it feel fresh. And I think I, I really liked how this turned out, but it kind of gives you an insight into how I clean whenever I'm doing a deep clean because this is what I call the move out move in method where you're moving everything out of the room or at least out of the way and then cleaning the spots from scratch then moving everything back in as if you just bought this house or just started renting this room. Now, the original plan was to take all the books off of the shelf and dust each one, dust the actual shelves itself, and then put all the books back. But I got overwhelmed at that thought. And I do this for a living, and I do it for fun on these videos. But that was too much for even me. At some point, we, we will end up painting this room, and then I will take all that stuff down because it needs it, and it, it just makes it feel so much cleaner. In the interim, I just went ahead and used a Swiffer duster and dusted the books and everything that was visible. And I was like the Oprah Winfrey of suck it. Like every time I dusted a book, I was like, and you can suck it, and you can suck it, and you can suck it, everybody can suck it.
those uh, bugs on the floor are not bed bugs or roaches or anything. Those are, I think they're called Japanese beetles, but they're basically like a brown version of a ladybug. We get infested with them every year, thousands upon thousands of them. And so you'll see me vacuuming these up here in just a little bit. Within the next month, there will be that many again. And by spring, I won't even be able to keep up with it. Like, I, I could vacuum, and then within a day or two, that many dead fake ladybugs will be all over the ground. Now, Jason isn't with me on this one because I told him, you want to come in this house? You're going to have to beat your old man in order to, to enter into here. And he started crying, and I was like, don't cry. You just want to enter. It's time to do battle, son. And then he tried, he, he whipped out a spin kick that missed me by about four feet. And he, he would have normally hit me with that spin kick, but I backflipped out of the way. That's why he missed so bad. Um, but I did two backflips into the air and landed perfectly on my feet. And then I whipped out a spin kick of my own and caught him in the chest and blew him through my front door. I made him replace it too. I'm like, I don't put up with front door blowing through and so he went ahead and rebuilt me another door and then i kicked it down again just to show him who's the man and then i made him rebuild another one so in his defeat he uh he drove away crying again and i, I was like i i'll clean this up myself jason jason <laughs> that bed was so heavy to move it's a king size and i think it's like a sealy and the mattresses are just super heavy, but I also have those uh, little particle board or plywood or whatever it is between the mattress and the box springs. And that's because I've got a fracture in one of the box springs and I've been too lazy to, re to repair it. And I could just buy new ones, but I just haven't gotten around to it. And we've just had those particle board things in there for years. It actually helps. It makes the mattress to where it doesn't bow or sink, but it also makes it really heavy because those uh, pieces of particle board are not light. I mean, they're light for me because I'm so strong and manly, but to an average everyday person, it would have taken six men to move that bed. But I just did it myself because that's, that's how I roll, son.
And please ignore the dong-shaped bottle opener <laughs> that's on that shelf. My wife got that, I think, in the Bahamas years ago, and we refused to put it in a drawer. We just display it out in the open because that's how we both roll wooden dong bottle openers. Here comes the uh, gigantic stand. This was no joke, really heavy. I, I'm not exaggerating when I say it was like 300 pounds. And it's full of stuff, which is what made it that heavy. But even empty, it took, seriously, last time we moved it, it took like three people. But I am sometimes an idiot, and I'm very impatient. And whenever I want things done, I want it done now. So I, And I was the only one home, so I just started scooting it as best I could, little bits at a time. My wife had painted it, and it looks cool, but she didn't prime it before she painted it. So that's what all those scratch marks are on top of it. To be honest, I considered just taking that out of here completely, but I did not want to have to get four people to carry that up to my garage and then trying to get like actually dispose of it. I, there's no way I wanted to mess with it. So I just left everything in it and we'll just use it for our video game holder and junk container. Uh-oh, what's this? It's a black box. Oh, <laughs> suck it. <laughs> it's here, baby. It is here, and it's about to be hung up. So I uh, I'd searched around for a frame, and I live in an area that's so small that things like frames require like specialty shops, and we have none of those. So I drove 30 miles to a Hobby Lobby and bought a shadow box with uh, black velvet on the inside. And then I just brought it home and just literally super glued <laughs> the YouTube plaque to it because eventually I will have it actually mounted on a really good frame and a, a good plaque display thing. But I just wanted it up on the walls. And I owe you all a sincere, deep, heartfelt apology. I said I was going to wear this around my neck like Flavor Flav, and I genuinely did try, but there's no way to attach a chain to it without like actually drilling into the back of it. So what I'm going to do is if by some weird miracle I hit gold, um, which is a million followers, if I get that gold plaque, I will genuinely turn that into an actual necklace with a real gold chain or a silver chain would make more sense. But I will, I will take that to a jeweler and we will figure out a way to turn that into a legitimate, honest to God, Flavor Flav style necklace. Then if I just want to display it on my wall, I'll just hang the necklace itself up on the wall. But sincerely, thank you so much for that. That is just beyond mind-blowing to me that we had more than 100,000 weirdos like me who like to watch cleaning videos. Because that's really why I started the channel. Was I was watching a bunch of other cleaning videos, and, and I still do every night. And I wanted to see some videos that I wasn't seeing many people do, which is hoarders and free cleanups and just doing really extreme cleanings. So I just started to do it myself. That way I could watch myself do it in fast motion. And I'm not really looking at me whenever I watch the videos. I'm just watching all the chaos turn into order. And then it turns out, like, I mean, after we got this, this plaque, we gained another 30,000 subscribers on top of that between when we got eligible for the plaque and today whenever I'm getting that mounted. That's crazy. All of you are crazy and insane. Sometimes things are crazy or insane. You all are, are both crazy and also insane. And I think as far as the last house that we did on the last two videos, I think we're going to be done with that one just because I, I don't have 
the time to go back and forth to figure out when I'm going to be able to get there and when she's going to be home and all that. But I do have more people lined up on my plate. So we will start a new house next weekend. And if you are wanting more than what you're seeing here, as far as videos, I do have a membership. It's kind of like YouTube's version of Patreon. And I think we got like 150, no, I think last time I looked, we were at like 190 members. And they all get an additional video per week. And in fact, what you're seeing uh, earlier, whenever I was rearranging my room, they all saw that a few days ago. So they get at least one extra video per week. It's usually me doing it kind of vlog style and talking and just discussing subjects that I'd like to discuss that's not in a place that's on the main channel. So sometimes you may hear me rant a little bit or vent. Sometimes it's just me killing time, uh, recording hands-free while I'm driving. But if you're on like an iPhone, the join button doesn't show up if you're in the app, but it does show up if you're in the browser. Everybody else, there's a join button on the main channel. And when you click that, though, I think it's like $4.99 a month and that uh, we will have more tiers than that at some point in the near future because I want to have cheaper tiers for people who can't afford the five bucks a month. But that gets you an extra video, um, and then I, I sometimes post some extra stuff in there like pictures or just me rambling. So for members, I'll see you all on Wednesday. And for non-members, also known as devil worshippers, I'll see you all on Saturday. Suck it. Later. <laughs>